Emma, thank you very much for talking to us today. So you've been in the artistic director's chair since the end of April. That's um, right. Rave reviews, fantastic summer season that is now in full swing. I mean, it must feel fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I'm knackered as well, <laughs> she says. Um, you know, it's been amazing. Opening dream and then the set that we're sitting on is The Flying Lovers. So I opened a second show in this small space. Um, amazing Irish Taming of the Shrew and then last week we opened Macbeth which is yes. one of the scariest things I've ever seen on stage <laughs> so I'm excited I mean that is quite a kind of timely production you know it's sort of politics and and you know underhand dealings yeah. and the relationship between England and Scotland and you know and also the sort of the awful things human beings are capable of it makes me cry every time and I never expected that and I think it's what people actually call catharsis that you look at it and you think oh God, can't we stop doing this to each other? Can't we stop the, um, the punishing violence? So here you are, 2016, quite a year to take over and, and to, you know, come to the globe. It's Shakespeare 400, of course, is, is, I guess, kind of, you know, spreading out into the whole of 2016. It's such a big anniversary. Did that bring an added pressure? I'm in complete denial about the whole thing. They actually asked me in my interview, which I should say was about 18 months ago, um, what about the four, 400th anniversary? And I said, what 400th anniversary? <laughs> so... Is it? I don't know. But that was before everybody was talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't do more, really. I mean, this year has been so much about Shakespeare. And uh, my predecessor, Dominic, brought back Hamlet from its Round the World tour. And we did the complete walk. So there's been a lot going on. And we, we do... Sh it's all about Shakespeare every year. Mm -hmm. So I haven't taken on the added pressure. You cut your teeth working at uh, Knee High Theatre down in mm -hmm. Cornwall. What did you learn there? Oh, I mostly learned to be not too serious and not take myself too seriously. They taught me how to clown. Um, I performed with them a lot and because there were never any theatres in Cornwall until sort of very recently, 15 years ago, so we performed outdoors. So we were on beaches and cliff tops and car parks and arsenic wastes. So I really... Arsenic wastes? Yeah. There's great sort of tipping grounds in Cornwall because it's been dug. Everything that has ever existed in Cornwall has been dug out Mind of the ground. Out, right, okay. Yeah. Um, so I learned to perform outdoors, and I, I think the outdoors demands big storytelling, which has made me quite a big director. Mm -hmm. um, so this space is a bigger challenge to me than the Globe, but it means that the, I sit really naturally in the Globe. I like big audiences. I love being under the sky. I sort of get a bit claustrophobic sometimes inside. So that's what Cornwall has given me, is a really big epic outlook on life. I think you said when you um, were about to start the job that you wanted to give people the experience that they would have had going to the theatre in Shakespeare's time or, or something like it. What do you mean by that? Well, one thing I, well, thing I hate about theatre is when you feel you've taken medicine, that it will be sort of good for you and it feels a bit... I'm having a cultural experience. Oh, yes, you know, haven't I done well to sit through this? And, and it does happen and it happens a lot and we don't talk about it. But I really feel that these plays, they were rip-roaring political thrillers and comedies that are bawdy and challenging and emotional. And what's clear is these people stood up, they drank, they shouted. It was a, a real part of their cultural existence. So that's what I want to recreate, is the fact that it isn't separate from our lives. It's really about being a community, coming together, telling stories. I think you said as well, you know, that, that your kind of treatment of Shakespeare is not coming from a place of kind of absolute reverence and study and fantasy. I mean, what, what, what's your perspective on, on the work, on his body of work? Well, I mean, the plays are extraordinary and they've lasted 400 years. Nothing lasts 400 years unless it should do. That's the thing is there's a great sort of Darwinian natural selection. The plays are brilliant and they're robust. However, not everything that was written 400 years ago remains relevant. Certainly, maybe academically it does, but not in a performance um, situation so that's where I'm irreverent and I think he'd be cheering me on in fact I fully believe he is because it's for the people and it's for now and these plays need to reach back through history and reach forward to the future and say yeah you know we've got things to say so what was it like your first day on the job kind of coming into this iconic space obviously we're here in the Sam Wanamaker theatre which is the smaller um, theatre uh, that's within the Globe building I mean what was it like walking through the doors for the first time and thinking this is mine. Ooh. Well, I wish there wasn't really, it wasn't quite as simple as a first time because I did a year's handover. So I was sort of creeping around the outskirts for a long time. Is it like when you win a, a goldfish at the fair and you... <laughs> 
You kind of take it over in the bag and then you put the bag within the tank just so it can acclimatise. Yes, a little right. bit of that. And in fact, it was very much like that because I had to have an office in the car park for a long time. So I really was that goldfish in a bag. Um, so I was acclimatised. But it was a funny day when I did actually go through the doors and move into my office, which actually um, is against the Globe Theatre. So I can hear the, um, the sound of the instruments and the sound of the audience clapping. And that is special. I sometimes touch the wall and think, this is good. So tell me about that audience. I mean, who are they? Who comes to the Globe as a kind of regular punter? And, and are there kind of any groups and audiences that you want to bring in who might not have tried it yet? Well, the brilliant thing about the Globe is you can come and see an epic world-class play for £5. And that means that access isn't really an issue. There's not many people that can't find five pounds. So the thing is the message about who's welcome. Mm -hmm. The thing that I love about that audience is anybody who's going to stand up for three hours tends to be young and adventurous. And yeah, sometimes they come from abroad, sometimes they come from different parts of the country. But that audience is there for a good time. And I don't think you feel that in any other London theatre. It's like they're sat forward saying, come on, literally cheering the plays on. And that's fantastic. A bit like a gig, really. That, I mean, that Very, very much like a gig. And that's when you get the really good dialogue between the plays and the audience, because mm -hmm. they're not there to be quiet. And they're fully seen, because they're in daylight. You know, and the act So the actors can see them and touch them. It's really exciting. And of course, you guys are working with The Pool on a, a series of summer gigs in this beautiful theatre, yeah. which is just going to be fantastic. Thank you very much for doing that uh, with us. What, what made you want to kind of bring music into the summer season? Well, I love music. Um, and I really wanted to sort of change this. This space is literally the most beautiful space you can imagine. You're bathed in candlelight. Everything you touch is beautiful. But there's a slight danger of it being precious. And I really, really wanted to bring a really contemporary voice in here. And to what I've just talked about, the way that the relationship between the audience and the stage is so strong in here. It feels like you can reach out and touch. And I really want that, um, that contemporary voice touching the ancient, which is what I think the story of this, these buildings are. The whole summer season is the wonder season. Yeah. How did you decide on that word and what's the idea behind it? Well, a lot of my um, early work, and in fact it's gone through a, almost my entire career as a, as a director, has been working with fairy stories or folk stories. Um, but I like to call them wonder stories because there's no fairies in them. Um, and in fact it's more than folk stories. It's using metaphor um, to illuminate life. So I've been working on these wonder stories for ages. And so it was my first thought was, where does my past body of work link with Shakespeare? So that was the question I asked, is where does the supernatural, the, the wonder elements live in Shakespeare? So there's the obvious, the witches in Macbeth, mm -hmm. the fairies in Midsummer Night's Dream, but then some slightly more unusual ones like um, Taming of the Shrew. She gets taken away from her community and her family and almost goes into exile where she's starved and she's abducted. And that's very much in the um, Italian tradition of epic folk stories where women have to endure, have to survive great sort of tasks. So wonder creeps into our lives in all sorts of ways. Our gigs that we're putting on in the Sam Wanamaker Theatre are, are Wonder Women, very talented female um, artists. And I know that that um, kind of gender issues are important to you. One of the first things that you did um, was to introduce, I think it's a 50-50 gender mm -hmm. balance on stage, something like 16% of Shakespeare's roles are for women, as I understand well, it. Well, it's 13% of the lines are written for women. Right, OK, so, so not very much. How was that received and how's it working out? No, it's been received brilliantly, um, and I think it's part of a bigger movement. My generation of women are sort of coming into positions of power, and we're just um, making change across the country. But I think we are the first organisation to get 50-50. And, you know, it was very easy. I just said to the directors, let's do it, and we did. And what's great about these plays is there's not a lot of reason why Gloucester can't be a woman. There's not a lot of reason. It was the other way around before, wasn't it? So, you know, originally it would oh, have been yeah. boys playing women in Shakespeare's yeah. time. So. But I felt, I felt particularly because I have temporary custody of these plays, that I felt that I had a, a duty to women because I think 
I think Shakespeare can provide a blueprint for how the rest of the next 400 years works because he's so brilliant. It's like people say, oh, yeah, as long as there's two women in the company, that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So we're very used to seeing eight men on stage and two women. Mm -hmm. And I just need to change that and just say, no, we're, we're here. We're here to stay. And we're, we play small parts and big parts and sexy parts and boring parts. We, we sort of, we're in the world, whether you like it or not. And did that feel like a, a radical statement to you? I mean, you, you know, you speak about it in, in quite, as if it's, you know, very natural, and I happen to think it is, but I, I would mm. imagine that, that lots of other people wouldn't, you know. It's, what's been interesting is how naturally it's worked into the process. Nobody struggled because it's very easy, and that's what I've really enjoyed about that decision, is you just say, let's do it, and you can. You haven't told people how to do it. So some people have just had women dressing up as men, which is very Shakespearean, I just changed some characters into women. So all my funny mechanicals in Dream are now played by women, which is great to see women being funny, being silly. Um, very Victoria Wood, you know. We're so we're saying thank you to all sorts of women that have gone ahead of us. Um, it is radical, though, and I think it's just, it's just saying the debate's over. Mm. There are also things going on at the Globe for families. I know you've got a big storytelling season going on over the summer. And there's online streaming now, as, as in, so now people yes. can kind of watch stuff going on at the Globe. So perhaps for people who, who kind of can't get here. Yeah, try Globe Player. It's amazing. You can duck into all sorts of work that we've done across the years. So, it's an, yeah, there's lots to see online. Long may it continue. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.